Welcome back to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over sedation medications commonly used for intubated patients, including Propofol, Versed, and Presidex, as well as the most common analgesic use, fentanyl. So, let's start off with Propofol, commonly referred to as just Prop. It's an anesthetic slash sedative with amnesic properties. So, essentially, it's going to put someone to sleep and they may not remember what happened while they were asleep. The key characteristics with Propofol is that it's quick on and quick off, meaning its onset is within one minute. And if you turn off the Propofol drip, the patient will wake up pretty fast, usually within 10 minutes. So for this quick on, quick off reason characteristics that Prop has, it's commonly used as a sedative for intubated neuro patients since patients need to be fully awake to obtain an accurate neurological exam. It's also the go-to sedation medication as long as the patient's blood pressure is holding on. So a key side effect that you, the nurse, must keep in mind with Propofol is that it can cause hypotension. So if your patient's BP is already low, Propofol may not be the best option unless your patient is also going to be started on a presser to counterbalance the hypoperfusion. So for this reason, when starting Propofol, you must check the blood pressure often, usually every five minutes until you figure out how your patient is responding to it. Another important thing to remember is that it has no effects on pain. So your patient is also going to require another pain medication on top of it. The typical range for PROP is 5 to 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute with a, pip, with a typical starting rate of 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. And when you titrate, usually it's by 5 micrograms every 5 minutes. However though, let's be a little realistic. Titrating drips is a work of art because you can't always start at 5, right? So for some patients, 5 may be more than enough, especially your smaller patients. However, for a lot of patients, especially chronic alcoholics, drug users, or bigger patients, they may require more and more medication to keep them sedated and nice and comfortable. So your start rate may have to be higher and not just 5. So with time, and with your precept result, you're going to figure out and kind of develop a skill for titration and for kind of seeing who needs what level of uh, medication. But again, the most important thing with Propofol is going to be repeating your blood pressure often in the very beginning to assess how your patient's blood pressure is responding to the Propofol. So another thing to keep in mind is that I for sure want to mention with Propofol is that it's prone to bacterial growth since it's made of fats. So you have to be extra careful with it. You have to have good, good hand hygiene. You have to make sure you're adhering to a septic technique. You have to put those little like green alcohol caps on all your Propofol tubing. And then you should change the tubing every 12 hours to prevent bacterial growth inside the Propofol itself. Now, let's get into Versed. It's a benzo, and it's going to be a sedative, hypnotic, with also a music property. So just like Probe, it puts your patient to sleep so they can get vented, right? The key trait about Versed that, unlike Probe, it's hemodynamically stable. So it's not going to tank your patient's blood pressure like Probe would. So if your patient who just got intubated has a soft blood pressure or a low blood pressure, Versed may be a better option over Propofol because of the low BP. Again, just like Prop, it does not have pain uh, effects. So you need another medication on top of it to help with pain. So Versed has an onset of around 60 seconds and its effects can last up to 30 minutes or more for them to wear off and for your patient to wake up, which is why it's not a good medications to use with neuro patients since you're since you're not going to get a good true neuro assessment since you don't really know when the medications are truly truly off right and then the range is typically two to ten milligrams per hour uh with a start rate between two to five milligrams per hour right so most facilities also have a loading dose to get your patient nice and comfortable and asleep typically for this loading dose it's going to be one to two milligrams every five minutes up to 10 milligrams so as far as side effects although we know it does not hit bp as much if you have your patient on a high rates for a long time or over sedation can occur and because it is a sedative it can begin to drop your blood pressure so keep that in mind right like if your patients on, on on versed and they're at a really high rate and they've been on it for a long time 
it can lead to some uh, hypo uh, hypotension. So just keep that in mind, right? But it's not going to be as profound as propofol, right? And then I've never had to use the reversal agent myself, but flumazenil is going to be the uh, reversal the reversal agent for uh, Versed if it's ever needed, right? And then if your blood pressure for whatever does begin to drop, a lot of the times the providers will just order like a liter of fluids, depending on ca on patient scenario and like their um, diagnosis, make sure they don't have CHF or that kind of stuff. So if, again, if the BP drops uh, with Versed, may order um, a fluid bolus or even a little bit touch of a presser to kind of just do the trick, right? Now, let's get into Presidix. It's not used too often, but you're going to see it every once in a while. So I just want to make sure that I discuss it here. It's an alpha-2 agonist with sedative properties. Keep in mind the alpha-2 properties for when we talk about the side effects, right? So the key trait of Presidix is that your, that your patient keeps their respiratory drive while they're on it. So it can even be used to sedate your patients who are not intubated. So again, the key thing with Presidix is that your patient maintains their respiratory drive. So another key thing is that you're not going to be able to achieve a deep sedation with Presidex. So your patients wake up very easily with any stimulation. And if used, the reason is going to be probably because the team is now planning on keeping your patient uh, vented for a long time because it only causes mild sedation. So if the patient just got to and they're only on Presidex and you perhaps need to do with like some type of intervention or something, the patient might need a touch of something else for the short term just to keep him down and comfortable. So again, Presidex does not achieve deep sedation, just very mild sedation. Your patient usually does wake up. And again, like Propen Verset, it does not affect pain. Now let's go into the alpha-2 agonist. So because it is an alpha-2 agonist, the main side effects uh, to keep in mind, especially when first starting off the drip, are going to be bradycardia and hypotension. So if you just started your the patient on a Presidex drip and your patient suddenly just goes brady with the super low blood pressure, the Presidex is most likely going to be the reason for that happening. So as for dosing, Presidex does come with a loading dose, but we try to avoid it because of the side effects we just talked about. But if you do end up giving a loading dose, it's usually somewhere around one microgram per kilogram over 10 minutes. And then your range is going to be 0.2 to 1.5 micrograms per kilogram per hour with the typical start rate of 0.2 mics per kg per hour. And then if when you do titrate uh, Presidex, it's usually somewhere around 0.1 micrograms per kilogram per hour every 10 minutes. And then as far as the onset, it usually starts to work within 10 minutes and for duration, the patients, as I said, really like wake up super fast, but they may be a little drowsy for like a good couple of hours. So again, the key thing with Presidex is that the patient keeps their respiratory drive, but the patient may have bradycardia and hypotension in the very beginning. Now let's go into fentanyl. So being intubated having a bunch of IVs, having a central line, perhaps a Foley an OG tube, and who, who knows what other stuff your patient has is going to be painful, right? But they can't speak to us when they're vented. So we need to assume that the patient is in pain because it would be really bad if they were in pain and we're not giving them anything, right? So some signs are going to be like your patient's tacky or hypertensive. Those are going to be some signs that you can see that your patient's perhaps in pain. So in combination with propofol or Versed, we need to add fentanyl on top of it, right? Fentanyl is an opio analgesic that's a deriv derivative of morphine. So it's, from my understanding, it's like 100 times stronger than morphine. And in, more importantly, it's hemodynamically stable. So it's not going to tank your blood pressure, right? So you can keep that in mind for uh, pain meds outside of just being vented right let's say you have a patient who's in pain they're not intubated but they have a low blood pressure fentanyl would be a good option since you know it's going to help with their pain and it won't make their blood pressure drop even more right so as far as the drip range for fentanyl it's going to be somewhere between 0 0.5 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per hour usually starting it at 0 0.5 mics per kick per hour many facilities allow for initial boluses to get your patient again nice and comfortable typically these are going to be 25 micrograms every five minutes up to 100 micrograms just like reverse said 
at higher doses for a long time, it can cause a lower blood pressure. So just keep that in mind, like Versed and fentanyl for a long time, since they do cause sedation, they can, it can lead to over sedation and kind of bring the BP down, but not in the beginning, right? So on a side note, when giving um, when you're giving it to your in, not intubated patients, do not slam it, right? Because we were talking about how you can give it to patients who are not intubated for pain, but don't slam it, especially on elderly, as it can lead to chest wall rigidity and your patients won't be able to breathe, right? So just make sure you don't slam it, especially don't slam any medications, right? Except if it's like adenosine or like in a code blue where the patient is pulseless and apneic, right? Um, and then as with any opioid, the reversal agent is going to be Narcan. Now, let's get into the nursing specific tips. Ideally, you want to ask the team what sedation meds they want before your patient gets intubated so that you have them ready to go after the patient is tubed. So you ask, hey, are we going to do Versed and Fent? Are we doing Prop and Fent? Or which, what are we doing so you can get it ready before beforehand, right? Sometimes, because of how critical your patient is, you won't be able to ask beforehand, but it does make it easier uh, to have them ready or um already right so after starting your sedation another key thing which we already talked about is to check your blood pressure every five minutes for at least the first 15 minutes to gauge how your patient is responding hemodynamically to the sedation medications right that you're giving especially if they just got intubated because they just received all those strong medications to knock him out right so another key tip is to never, ever, ever let your drips run dry. I don't care if it's your sedation meds or your pressors or any other drip that has to be continuous. Do not let it run dry, right? And uh, so just make sure you have another bag ready before it goes empty. So always keep track of them um, no matter what, right? And then another one is going to be label all of your lines and organize them. You should be able to grab any tubing at any time. And because of your labeling, know exactly what is running in it without having to backtrack it up to the pump. It makes everything so much easier. And then if your patient is on sedation medications and pressures and is super critical, if they don't have a central line, advocate for one, right? you can gather all the supplies needed for a central line and leave them at the bedside so that when your provider comes in, they can just go in there and place it. And then of course, verify with your own facilities, the protocols for the dosages, for the titration and for loading protocols, just to make sure that you stay safe and are protected by your own facility. Ooh, so that was a good lesson. I hope you got something out of it. Now let's get into the question of the day. Where should I am Rosefin be administered and why? As always, the answer, to, the answer to this will be at the bottom of the description text. And then I think that being a good ear nurse depends a lot on your experiences, but also on taking the time to look up and familiarize yourself with topics that you don't fully understand. Um, for this reason, I love that you guys watch my videos, but there's also a, uh, some good nursing books that I've read that I think are very useful. I have them in the description. And then if you learned something today, I would really appreciate a like and a follow. And then if you want to help uh, further support, I have a little uh, small red bubble store with like some stickers and stuff. And then as always, guys, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive. We are not reactive. All right, everyone. Have a nice day.